Good morning, everyone. I am just starting work. I just had my breakfast. I have laundry on, so I wanted to use my little phone microphone because it's gonna be pretty loud. I actually have to hop into a meeting in like four minutes, so I just wanted to say good morning and hello and welcome. And a good old intro to my new Christmas mug. It's adorable. Oh, I also, the reason I wanted to come in quickly this morning is because I needed to tell you guys about the new almond croissant, <laughs> you know, the whole debacle um nespresso pod because i told you in my last video that i would tell you guys how i felt about it and that i would try it and we did the verdict is that i like it i don't love it it tastes a lot like a previous one they've done which i feel like they kind of just it was like an almond one um and they just rebranded it to be like an almond croissant because they i don't know that's trendy or something it tastes very like marzipan-y which i don't mind but i definitely like the gingerbread one more but it's still good it's festive it's yummy like it has a flavor to it but yeah it's nothing like to write home about if you know what i'm saying but anyway i need to hop into my meeting i have so much work to do i feel like i say that all the time but the last couple of months have been like exceptionally busy like crazy 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 it's just been very busy leading up to the holidays i feel like it's gonna slow down right before christmas just wanted to say good morning and hello and welcome to this video it's gonna be kind of like a christmasy day of my life vlog but i also wanted to go over some gift ideas not like the typical gift guide this is going to go up before cyber monday so if you guys like are still looking to buy things and leading up to the holidays i think it would be a good thing to check out but almost more like a formula of buying gifts for people that you love and care about um just with a couple of ideas thrown in there as well so it's not necessarily a guide but stay tuned for that i'm excited because listen i don't toot my own horn often but i am good at giving gifts and i'm good at wrapping gifts i think we've discussed that but gifts are kind of my thing <laughs> and i want to share that with everyone share the love and spread the love so we'll do that later today um but for now it's work time okay this is where i really wish that i had like a mini microphone that i could clip onto my shirt so family if you're watching christmas ideas moving right along i thought before i got into some of my like gifty ideas it is officially the beginning of advent calendar season so let's open the next box together just one this time don't worry it's not going to be too many but I to be opening them throughout the month of December because it's the only advent calendar I have right now. I am going to get myself another one because I kind of want like a tea or a chocolate one or something. But these are so exciting. Can't wait to see what this one is. Maybe we'll put it on. Oh, I don't even remember. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. It's a ring. Gosh, it's so pretty. I want to put it on right now. Ooh. Please excuse how dry my hands are but i am wearing the green earrings for the first time as well and i love them um also have my mug going my christmas mug going i've got a magic bag on my lap because i'm cold <laughs> it was actually supposed to snow last night i don't think it did but it might have like sprinkled a little bit and then just gone away this morning did want to get into like i mentioned just a couple of like christmasy holiday it doesn't just have to be christmas of course like any holiday and honestly all of these carry over into like any gifting that you're going to be doing throughout the year whether it's for birthdays father's day mother's day someone going through something tough um just kind of anything any sort of gifting let's just get right into like my main tips for gift giving and gift buying and i think there's so much like overconsumption that goes on and you know i personally love buying gifts i love giving gifts what i do not love is just gifting for the sake of gifting like just buying something because you feel like you have to whether it's someone's birthday or it's christmas or whatever so i'm not encouraging that and i actually encourage against it i don't think that you should do that i think like people don't need more things in general if you're trying to buy a gift for someone who is that person in your life that has everything then be creative don't buy them a gift get them an experience or write them a really nice card or do something kind for them, take them out for dinner, anything like that. Like I think buying with intention and making sure that you're buying a gift for someone that is actually thoughtful is the most important thing. I mean, it, at the end of the day, you do not need to gift anyone anything ever. And I think your presence should be present enough for the people that you love. But I think on special occasions or holidays or times when someone could use an extra little something something gifting can be really nice but it doesn't have to be something you spend a lot of money on and i think it's even more thoughtful and it shows that you care even more when it's something that you you know they've wanted for a long time or they wouldn't buy themselves or in the, it's a or and it's a or and it's a oh my god <laughs> or it's an experience you guys can do together or it's just something you know like showing them that you care about them 
So I think my main things are do not gift just for the sake of gifting. It's just a waste of money. It's a waste of space for them. And it just doesn't serve anyone. And buy or gift with intention. So my biggest thing is throughout the year, the people that I care about, the people that I love, if I'm on the phone with them, if I'm with them, if we're window shopping, we're out and about, I like to have a note section for gift ideas for that year. For 2024, I have a gift ideas list in my notes app. I mean, you could literally use anything, but that's just the thing that I use the most often. And it's like the most accessible to me because I always have my phone on me. And you know, if I'm out shopping with my sister and she mentions that she like really loves something, I'll take a picture of it or I'll write it down or both and add it into my notes. Um, friends, family, anything like that. I'll just kind of take note of those things. And then when it comes time to gift things or kind of whenever, if you're just feeling like gifting someone something, but when it comes time, like the holidays, to gift someone something, I'll go reference my notes app and say, oh, they've been wanting this and they've mentioned it a couple of times. So I know that this would be like a really good gift idea or it's something that they haven't bought themselves. And you know, they've been talking about it. They just won't bite the bullet and buy it themselves. So then I will do that. And then I get to give them something that I know that they'll love and that I know isn't going to be a waste of money for me and a waste of space for them. So I always love to do that. I've done it pretty much my entire life since I've been gifting. Um, definitely got that passed down from my mom. She was the master of gifting and the master of honestly Christmas. She passed down the love of Christmas and the love of gifting with intention to me and to my sisters. And uh, I hope to carry that on for the rest of my life because it's something that's so special. And I think, you know, when I receive a gift from someone or something like a card or anything where it just shows that they know me or they've been listening or they really care about me, that's so much more thoughtful than someone just like spending a bunch of money on me for kind of no reason. Obviously there's a time and a place for everything and to each their own. Like some people just really love to receive gifts and you know that you might know that about them and they just love to have things expensive things or whatever and that's totally fine like literally to each their own just know your audience don't just buy something like i've said a million times already for the sake of buying it be more intentional and then you save yourself some like money as well if you're not like spending a whole bunch of money just because you feel like you have to so anyway got that housekeeping out of the way speaking of thoughtful gifts i think this kind of ties in this time of year can be really tough for people, whether it brings up grief, whether you're going through something really hard and you can see everyone else being happy. It can be really financially straining for a lot of people as well, so it can come with stress. Um, I know that this time of year is just not all, all sparkles and happiness. And I think thoughtful gifts go a long, long way, especially this time of year. Something homemade, a really nice card, photos, you know, something like printed, personalized items. Those things are really, really special. And I also, I wanted to highlight a couple of things. So I obviously, if you guys have been watching me for a while, you know that I've been through losing someone. I lost my mom a couple of years ago and it's still, and probably will be the hardest thing I've ever gone through in my life. And I think having tools to kind of get through that is super beneficial. And if you know someone who has been through something recently and you don't really know what to get them, whether it's for the holidays or just you wanna support them in going through this and you don't know how to. My sister actually created a grief journal and I think grief journals are such a nice thoughtful gift because it's not something you're gonna to think to buy yourself if you've been through something like that. I think there's a lot of books out there that are super helpful as well and it just can maybe show that you really care about someone. So my sister created the Forget Me Not journal and it's so beautiful. My sister, I'll tag her down below and I'll also tag the where you can purchase the grief journal. But she is a very, very creative person. She's a wedding photographer. So also, if you're interested in getting photos for your wedding, you can check her out, Rebecca Frank. But like I said, I'll link everything down below. Um, and this just has like prompts to talk about the person that you love. And it's just like an easy kind of, there's like room for stream of consciousness, like just writing down your grief. And there's different sections in it. It's lined. And I'll show you guys a close up of it as well. But you know, it says your hobbies were, you looked like, you smelt like, this is how I would describe your personality. Just so that like, sometimes I, I remember, especially in the beginning, I was so fearful of forgetting anything about my mom that I just wanted to have everything written down. Obviously I don't forget anything about her and I'm so lucky that I had 24 years of my life to create memories with her. I wish I had way longer than that, of course, but I was so scared of that for some reason. That was like an overwhelming feeling that I was just gonna forget things. So having something like this is so, so nice and so thoughtful. So I think like a gift like this, if you do know someone, I hope that you don't, but of course it happens to so many people. Um, if you do know anyone who's experiencing loss and it doesn't necessarily have to be a death, it can be a lot of different things. Like grief can look like a lot of different things. 
um, something like a grief journal or a journal of some sort is really thoughtful. I mean, of course, know your audience. This could offend someone, <laughs> you know, if they're not ready to go through their healing journey, but I think that this could be a really, really thoughtful gift, and it does help that my sister created it, and I think it is such a special item. In the same vein of the more homemade thoughtful items, I'm not actually going to show you inside of this, but I did for myself create a book of messages between myself and my mom. Um, again, I was just so scared of like technology failing and me not having my text messages with her into the future, so I created a printed book that has um, text messages with her and I. I'm going to create different books because there are so many more than this, but this was just the most recent years, and I just wanted to have something printed and out there that I could read on hard days and just like have it in a physical copy. I created just a cover on Canva, got that printed, and then got like hundreds of pages printed um, at Staples, I believe, and then I bound it together, or I got Staples to bind it together. I didn't actually do that myself. but. Obviously this is very personal, but just something along these lines, if you know someone, they don't have to be going through something, it can be like photos or messages between you and your loved one, your partner, and you could just have like little memories inside a book and bind it together and that can just be something so special. It can even be something that you do like annually so that you have every year to look back on. But I just think like you can be creative and this didn't cost me a whole bunch of money. Um, and it's just so thoughtful and creates memories and it's something that you can kind of do with your hands a little bit. It doesn't have to be specifically this, but yeah, I have this just to show you guys because it's something that I still look through like all of the time and it's so special and I'm so glad that I did this for myself and I hope to do it for my family members as well. But sometimes I'll go through it and obviously you forget things and I'll like I have so many messages in here of my mom having sent me like memes or little like emojis that she had created of herself and it just always makes me just brings me right back to that moment so things like this can be also a really special and nice gift idea okay i've been talking for far too long already so let's get through the actual ideas where right? i am looking at my ipad because i have a couple things written down but like i said keeping track of gifts in your notes all year round is something that's so important obviously if you're not doing that already you're gonna have to start doing that next year i can't really help you this year for that but start taking note you know you still do have all of december to buy some holiday gifts and then i just wanted to go over my formula if i do want to buy someone a gift in order to come up with ideas to buy them of things that i think that they would probably like if i don't have too much information so what i normally do is break things down by category in my brain so accessories health and wellness experiences travel fashion and all of that so i just kind of categorize things in my mind and then i think hmm okay accessories have they been wearing sunglasses recently do they need a new pair have they been talking about new headphones that they want have they been talking about something specific in technology they want to start a podcast they want to start vlogging they want a camera to start taking pictures they want to start a new hobby so then i start to categorize things in my brain and think about that person specifically and then think about those categories and them make kind of a little venn diagram in my brain and think about the possibilities of gifts and you know what i love to do especially these days when like i mentioned overconsumption is a huge thing and there's just like how many things do people need like listen i love buying little trinkets and little small things but i just don't need so many things and i don't think anyone really needs that many items and material pieces to be happy but i think experiential gifts are like the best of the best if you want to give someone something and you have the ability to do so like a concert or a pottery class or a cooking class to do with them and show them like hey i bought you this gift and we get to do it together which is so fun and it's also something to look forward to or like i mentioned yeah like a concert ticket of someone that they really love to listen to if they've never seen before or even like a musical a showing of a movie at like a fun different theater like so many different things and again they don't have to be crazy expensive but I always love the root of an experiential gift over actual material items and then you can get creative with how you present it to them and wrap it that's like my favorite part like you can put you can print out something you can go onto canva and make a little invitation or you can print out like a ticket for the movies or a concert or get the pdf printed of like the confirmation that you got and then put it in a box or put it in a nice envelope and put it in another box wrap a big thing so they have no idea what they're getting like i think you can be so creative and so fun with that um, but yeah, I do love an experience as a gift, a trip if you have the money to do that, a, you know, traveling if they love that and things that go along with traveling. So if you bought them a trip, then you can buy them like a little passport holder and have the like boarding pass or like a fake boarding pass in there to show them that they're going on the trip. Like you can get really creative and it's so much fun to do that. 
Another, before I get into the list, another thing I like to do is think about upcoming things that the person I'm buying for has in the future. So for me, for example, I booked myself a half marathon in February. So I think um, gifts that are related to that are really thoughtful and super useful. So, you know, like running gear or items that go along with running or things that are kind of like Barcelona, Spain, themed because that's where I'm going from a half marathon so if you can think about things that are coming up for your friends whether they're you know maybe they're having a baby in the new year or someone is moving into a new apartment or a new home or something big is happening in their life in the future you can buy things now for that and that is also like hey I'm thinking about you I know that you have this going on and I wanted to get you a gift that made me think of you I think those things are also really important to think about when you're gifting. So write all this down. I hope everyone has a tea, a coffee, and a pen and a piece of paper to write this stuff down because it is useful. But you know, I have been told that I'm pretty good at gifting, not to brag too much, but I have been bragging in this clip. <laughs> so anyway, write it down, take note of it. Okay, now we're getting into the nitty gritty. We're just gonna quick fast fire, go through a couple of items that I think are really nice gift ideas for this year specifically. Um, just things that I've been seeing or things that I want that are on my wish list. So number one being I am dying to have a sunrise alarm clock. I love the idea of the hatch. I don't know if there's like other dupes that are better, like less expensive because I know it's pretty expensive for an alarm clock, but I struggle and especially lately I've been struggling so hard to wake up to my alarm. I keep snoozing it. It's the most annoying sound of all time. I know you can change it, but just like a jarring alarm sound, it's just, it just cannot be good for your nervous system to wake up to that. So I think a sunrise alarm clock is such a nice gift and it's like one of those things for me especially I've been saying I want it for so long and it's just hard for me to actually be like oh yeah I'm gonna spend 200 bucks on that right now so you know I think it's a nice gift like I mentioned earlier I always think sunglasses for some reason are always a really nice gift especially like a nice pair of sunglasses because I find everyone pretty much wears them they're such a nice accessory and it's hard to spend a lot of money on them you know I think it makes a huge difference if you get like a good solid pair of like polarized sunglasses they are something you're gonna have for a long long time and again it's so easy to just go to these shops and buy like 10 15 20 dollar sunglasses but they never last a long time and they're not actually good for sun protection so I think sunglasses are always a good gift idea another thing is a matching pajama set I'm so into these lately as you guys would have seen my indigo ones those ones are amazing they're like some of the softest things i've ever had one of my best friend's boyfriends actually oh my god my best friend's husband um called a couple of months ago for his wife's birthday my best friend it's so weird to call them husband and wife still and it's literally been a year um and i told him that he should get these pajamas for her because they're amazing he bought them she received them she knew i had a little hand in it but she loves them so I think they're such a great gift and they're just so cozy. You can get them from anywhere. I mean, Indigo has them. I know Skims has really nice pairs. Any department store, pretty much any like clothing store that you go into now is gonna have matching pajamas. Just makes you feel like a little special and they're just such a nice gift. And again, it's something that you're not necessarily going to buy yourself. So if you have someone who's like a homebody, loves to stay at home, loves to cozy up, a sweatsuit, or as my mom used to call them, fruit suits, or matching set of like PJs are always a nice gift. And then for people who love to be in the kitchen, who have just moved into a new home or apartment, I think kitchenware items are always a nice gift and always well received. Recently for Father's Day or my dad's birthday, I can't remember which one, my sister and I went splits on the always pan, which I also have and she also has. We've all like gifted it to one another. And my dad was so excited about it and loved it. And I love mine. I think it's just like, again, one of those things that sometimes it can be hard to like actually buy yourself, like a really expensive or really, not like really expensive, that's not too, too bad. But like the Cousset, for example, they have really nice like Dutch ovens and like pots and everything. And they're so beautiful to look at. And sometimes for when you're buying for yourself, it's easy to justify like, oh, I don't need that. So I think it's a really nice gift for someone who loves to like cook or be in the kitchen or who is like moving into a new home and kind of needs to re buy a couple of things. So pots, pans, nice items, a pan that can do everything um, or Le Creuset is always like, it's always my dream item. Any of those things or Smeg. I think Smeg is just so cute for the right person. It's not everyone's aesthetic, but Smeg like a kettle, a toaster, kind of any of those little items. The Smeg coffee machine looks so beautiful and so like just nice as a decorative item as well as very functional. Um, so any of those things, I'll, of course, like I mentioned, I'll link like all of my ideas down below and all of the things that I'm talking about down below. I also created like a little vision board on Pinterest of like gifting. So I'll show that on the screen too. But kitchenware, 
um, I think is always a nice gift idea. You guys, honestly, how do I talk so long? My memory card just ran out of battery, so we need to fly through the next couple of items, and then I will leave you be and take a break from me talking. But I do have just a couple more items that I wanted to go over, so we gotta do this quickly. I think headphones, over-the-ear headphones, earphones, like any of those types of things are always a really nice gift as well if you know the person doesn't have a pair or are looking for a new pair or likes to go for walks, exercise, needs to focus when they're working, like any of those things. I think that it's just like a nice gift. Doesn't have to be Apple ones, definitely does not have to be Apple ones. There are some really good sales right now and I am getting this out before Cyber Monday, so look out online because I feel like Best Buy, Walmart, all of those places always have really good sales on headphones and earphones as well. And then this one's like a little bit niche, but I think some people, and I just think it's a really nice gift. I've talked about this before, but I think board games are always a really nice gift or card games, anything along those lines. I just think again, people have collections of those. It's something you don't necessarily always think to buy for yourself. So I think it's really nice to buy them as gifts. And there's so many that are really nice now. I'll pop up a couple of like inspiration photos of different ones that I'm thinking of, but there are some collections that are coming out that are like gorgeous classic board games that you could have on your bookshelf that like look very beautiful, like checkers and chess and tic-tac-toe and even like monopoly and like all of those ones but they're in like these beautiful like bound boxes and things that almost look like books that are like really beautiful to display as well so i think that's like a really nice collector's item also gift that's functional and fun and then you guys could like play it together so i think it's just like a really nice thing especially maybe for like people that you know who really love hosting or again who are like moving into a new place uh, especially as someone who has like rediscovered her love for reading in the last like year or two years i think the Kindle has literally changed my reading life, not to be dramatic, but it has. So I think a Kindle, Kobo, e-reader of any sort, a very, very good gift. And it can also re-inspire someone to love reading um, and to get back into reading. It just like makes the experience so much easier, especially if you know someone who like travels a lot or is really busy or, you know, is kind of on the go, whether it's commuting or on a plane or whatever. I think a Kindle is such a nice gift or Kobo or e-reader, anything like that. Again, like I've mentioned in the past, I think a Kobo might even be better in Canada because of the whole like library thing. Um, but yeah, I just think those are a really good gift idea too, and they're not too expensive. I think those Theraguns are a really nice gift, and it's something that I've been wanting for a while but have not purchased myself. So I think, again, that just goes to show you that sometimes it's just harder to buy things like that for yourself, and I think that they are a nice gift. And for me, like, who's doing half marathon training, I know it's nothing crazy, but I my legs have been more sore than normal, so I think it would be like a really nice gift. And they have those like mini ones that are actually really cute, so um, I'm thinking of getting myself one if someone doesn't buy me one for Christmas. Wink, wink, dad or sisters. Okay, two more items and then I will shut the F up. But I also think if you don't have an idea for someone for like a physical gift, I think like subscriptions or memberships are always a really good call as well. Like you can get them a year long membership for like that book of the month club or HelloFresh or like a food subscription service because then they can like try a new recipe. It just like is sent to their door every month. I think that that's really cool and a really great idea. Or it can be like a gym membership or a class pass for a gym that they love to go to or a yoga or Pilates studio that they've been wanting to try. You can get them like a 10 class pass or something like that. That just goes to show that you like know what they like. You know that they've talked about wanting to try something or like even a subscription to Netflix or Amazon Prime if they don't have that yet. Like something like that. Those can also be a really good gift and I think that they can go forgotten because there's so many other like physical items that you can buy but i think subscriptions and memberships are always a really good idea and like i mentioned it can be something a little bit more niche like the book of the month or i don't even know there's so many memberships and subscription services out there that you can buy for someone that are like niche to a hobby or something that they love as well and finally this is not one specific item but i think anything personalized like I've talked a lot about if someone really likes to like bake or cook I think like a cute little personalized apron is so sweet or like oven mitts hats for sports teams that they love that are like engraved or personalized engraved is not the right word but like other items like a ring that you could get engraved or prints from like Etsy and small local businesses that you can kind of have like that are bespoke items that you're getting made to order or you're just ordering from these small businesses that have kind of like niche things like I know I've had on my Etsy wish list for like a million years this one poster from Brooklyn Nine-Nine that is Holt saying vindication because I literally love that show and I love that scene um I've just never purchased it for myself but you know if you know someone loves a show or loves like something very specific you can get them like a little piece of art or a print or something from Etsy or like a local business or if someone loves a city or they've lived in a city or are moving you can get them a print of the place that they're from or anything like that so I think like art prints and things that are very specific to 
people that you love are really awesome like i know when i was moving to london i got myself like a little nova scotia print because i wanted to bring that with me to have a little piece of home so those are my not so quick but fun i think ideas for christmas gifts the formula for buying gifts for people and thinking about how you can carefully and thoughtfully buy items or gift people things that are that show that you care about them and show that you've been thinking about them so i hope that this was helpful sorry that i talked so much and this was so long but we'll get into the rest of the video now but thanks for listening if you did i hope that you guys got cozy and had a little drink or snack for that little segment because she was quite long mm. I am packing my bags, I am leaving, think I'm going to Paris or Rome, I gotta get out of this god of place that I used to call. You guys, I have had an Epsom salts bath. I have exfoliated, moisturized, put my comfy cozies on, new sheets out of the washer and dryer, onto the bed, ready for me to crawl into, slipping and sliding like a seal. And I've got dinner on, waiting for me, and I'm about to pour myself a little kombucha, drink some water, and watch a Christmas movie. Is there literally any better feeling or anything more ideal in the winter. I don't think so. I literally do not think so. I bought some um, frozen cauliflower gnocchi from No Frills when I was on my way home from the gym and put that on. And then I also just had some like tomato sauce with ground chicken or turkey or something that I made earlier this week. Just have that heating up and I feel so cozy and like relaxed and tired. <laughs> and I'm so ready for a cozy chill Friday night in. I'm going to see Wicked tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. This is just episode one of Vlogmas. I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about that really quickly. I'm not going to do the 12 days of Vlogmas like I did last year because I just don't have the time this year. Um, I don't even know how I did that last year with like a full-time job that I had to be in the office for three times a week. Like I actually have no idea, uh, but I made it happen. And I'm just going to do two posts a week for December, which is very exciting. As you guys know, I've only been doing one post a week on Sundays usually for the last like quite a few months so you're getting a little bit more content from me but not too much because even last year I found like it was just too much you guys couldn't keep up I couldn't keep up no one was really like fully watching all of the vlogs so I feel like two a week is the perfect happy medium um, and I'm just gonna do like different vlogmas episodes so yeah today was more centered around the holiday gift guide obviously because I didn't stop talking for like 30 minutes <laughs> um, but yeah just brought you along for like a little bit of yoga and my chill cozy Friday night as well um, which is really nice and I have my new milk jar Christmas candle because I ran out of my Hugo one which was amazing I need to go buy myself another one now I have the Christmas one on got, got the Christmas tree turned on as soon as I walked in the door of course and yeah it's just been so cozy I'm listening to Christmas music still reading my Sally Rooney book which I'm actually loving by far the best Sally Rooney book I've ever read can eat some dinner I haven't decided which Christmas movie I want to watch I have a couple on my list I wrote a list this year of all the ones that I want to watch um couple of my lists that I haven't watched. I've actually watched quite a few already. As, listen, as of November 11th, it's officially Christmas for me. After Remembrance Day, it's Christmas in Canada for me. We don't have American Thanksgiving, so we don't have to wait until the end of November. And why would I delay something that makes me so happy and brings me so much joy? You know, listening to Christmas music, watching Christmas movies. Like, don't yuck someone else's yum when it's literally doing no harm to anybody and you're just being a hater, okay? this movie gets me the night before has to be one of my favorite christmas movies of all time now i don't know how old it is like it's not that old actually let's look it up 2015 oh my god almost 10 years old now that's crazy anyway i'm eating my popcorn salad i'm having a sleepy girl mocktail and i'm watching the night before 
and I'm just absolutely living right now. This right here, everyone, is my idea of a perfect Friday night, especially because I have 15 kilometers to run tomorrow morning. I need to chill tonight, and I'm so happy to be doing it. Pure bliss. This is romanticizing winter and <laughs> just being happy. But anyway, that's where I'm gonna sign off because this, these Sleepy Girl mocktails, swear to God, sometimes it feels like I'm on drugs. It's crazy. What does she want? The first time I gave it to one of my friends, she literally thought I drugged her. <laughs> it just like hits you. But anyway, promise I'm not. And it's literally just magnesium, cherry juice, and sparkling water. But I'm gonna finish watching this movie, probably go to bed after that crawl right into my clean sheets and have a nice early sleep but that is it for vlogmas episode one i'll see you guys in the next one later this week like i said two uploads a week i'm hoping for sundays and wednesdays or thursdays so you'll catch me on wednesday or thursday for the next one let me know down below the things you guys want to see from me I have a couple of ideas but if you have any other ones do let me know and also if you've made it this far in the video please let me know down below because I'm also just very curious what your favorite Christmas movie of all time is. I just watched while you were sleeping for the first time, like a really old Sandra Bullock kind of Christmas adjacent movie. Like it's not about Christmas necessarily, but it's based at Christmas time. And that was my first time watching it. I love anything Sandra Bullock. I just love her so much. So love that movie. Um, obviously it's not in my top favorite Christmas movies of all time, but I'm very curious. Let me know down below what your favorite Christmas movie is of all time. And then I will know who the real ones are who stayed all the way till the end. You're all real ones, don't worry. I know that I talk a lot and you can't always stay till the end, but love you guys. See you in the next Vlogmas episodes very, very soon. And for now, have a good night.